All right, with the end times coming, I had a fun <laughs> little uh, deep dive into what animals might replace us in a few million years as the uh, dominant intelligent species on the planet. And the four groups that came up the most in my little four hours of drunken research kind of surprised me of rats, raccoons, octopus, and crows. Figure we could discuss what society might look like in a few million years based on these four. I'm gonna say <laughs> real quick, octopus are fucked. You can't smell fucking metal underwater. <laughs> I mean, if you go by like a volcanic vent, I guess you could probably do something, but <laughs> you're underwater, you're fucked. True. Sure. Crows actually have the best set right now just because they aren't exclusively prey, like they actually do eat other animals. And just being a bird lets them run away from shit that a rat would just get eaten by. Oh, and just fly? Yeah, the girl just fly away. <laughs> the fucking bird runs away, Nolan. <laughs> yeah, the bird flies away. <laughs> Are you a fan of the Adam Carolla show and his attack crow theory? No, <laughs> What's that? I don't even know what that is. He thinks that you could train crows to be attack crows because um, if like a uh, somebody fucks with the crow, like the crows can remember your face and they can communicate your face to other crows. So they I'm have. Not this... sure about that second part, but crows what? can remember shit for up to three years. They're actually forming yeah. pair bonds with wolves, like we did back, you know, in prehistoric times. So there's wolf packs out there that have crow flocks that bond with the pups and shit, and they help each other out. That's actually crazy. It's fucking awesome. Wow. Yeah, crows can make tools, solve puzzles. They're as smart as like a, they're a, a, like a they smart can, dog. They can get shot by prop guns. Yeah, but so can people. <laughs> well, that was the joke that Jason Lee and the, the crow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, the problem with crows is their, their brain can't get any bigger, physically bigger, whereas octopus, raccoons maybe too, the thing with raccoons is they effectively have thumbs. Dude. Yeah. Rocket! Whoa! Yeah, they could, they could throw shit at the crows. But if you're talking about, you know, evolving a little bit, like bipedal raccoons? Well, not even fully bipedal, just the ability to stand on their hind legs long enough to manipulate shit. Then they can it's run like away on all fours, because that is faster if you've got the right body build for it. Problem with raccoons is they're not in the desert and shit, right? What's that matter? <laughs> Humans, I think, became humans when we left the jungles and we started having to use our brains to adapt to changing climates and conditions and stuff. And crows have that. Yeah, but the, we went the, from jungle to savanna prairie areas, not the Sahara Desert. Well, we went to prairie and then Neanderthals in the north and the cold. And like, I think having to adapt to changing conditions caused intelligence to matter. Crows are more used to changing yeah. and adapting to, to different territories and stuff. I mean, when you look at rats and raccoons, you got to remember, they live everywhere humans live, effectively, outside of a few mm -hmm. extant circumstances, like Arctic bases. Yeah, yeah but so then crows are not humans. Wolves, so. <laughs> Once you tell me that, I'm, I'm team crow all day. I, oh, I'm yeah, team, I'm team crow all day. With wolves. <laughs> you see a raccoon walk up to a wolf, he's going to get oh, them yeah. fang. <laughs> well, he's going to give that wolf some fucking rabies. That's what's going to happen. If you ever see a raccoon out during the day, uh, nine times out of ten, it has rabies. Don't go near it. Yeah, huh. yeah raccoons are just like the anti-vaxxers of the animal society. <laughs> no, they're like, they're the herd sick. immunity. <laughs> of the animal. Like, what happens if we, we all get rabies? Everyone's... I don't like, know. Let's try. <laughs> Is your goal now to help the odds out of these animals of surviving, like humans. Well, why would I do that? I'm like a humans. communal primate. I'm with the primates till the end. I don't really have but, a fucking option. These crows are millions of years away from evolving into any kind of civilization. And then how would I even interact with them? You don't think we should try to create a backup for intelligence? Like, no, the Earth's going to do that no matter what. <laughs> We're a fungus on the Earth. That's what all, like, fucking biological life is. The Earth doesn't give a shit about us. When we're gone in a few million years, they'll make more of whatever the fuck we are, technically. It doesn't matter. And because it doesn't matter, I'm team human. That doesn't mean I can't Back. speculate on what the future teams might be. Now, 
to think about it, octopus versus crow in like a mechanized war. Oh, that sounds I would watch shit. that movie. That would watch yeah, that movie. Exactly. Yeah, octopus can go on land and stuff for a little bit too. Well, the so octopus could like, probably come up with some kind of mechanism where they carry a fucking coconut around full of water. Yeah. And just dip their fucking gills in it because they're crazy smart. Are there octopuses that there's some fish that can like they live in like areas where like the water recedes and yeah, there's like puddles and they can like jump from puddle to puddle. Yeah, mud skippers and lungfish. They're fucking crazy. But, but oh, here's another fun thing about octopus. Uh, along with a couple other cephalopods, several nations have uh, recognized their existence as sentient beings, which really makes uh, the Japanese even more fucked up. <laughs> yeah, just think about that. Every time you eat some unagi, that was a thinking, feeling being. Have fun with that. Yeah. That means hentai is just two consenting sentient beings. Getting yeah. down. Another fun song. fact about octopuses. Uh, you ever watch Futurama, the episode where Zoitberg goes home for his mating rituals? And it turns All out right. his entire species dies after they mate? Yeah. yeah that's octopuses. <laughs> they die after they mate. That's crazy. Yeah, because the male octopus will just die from the exertion and losing so much bodily fluid to fertilize the eggs. And Done then that. the female octopus guards the eggs for up to like two years without ever eating or sleeping or anything like that. Damn, I'm back on Team Crow. <laughs> then the yeah, babies hatch and eat her carcass. These Mother Nature don't play games. Stuff. The more I learn about nature, the more I'm glad I'm a mammal. For real. The second episode of this podcast was about like a fight between the animal species in the future. He was on Team Rats. He thought that lab rats would be um, intelligent and take over the world. Well, uh, let's break this down strategically. On the rat's end, they got numbers for days, and they got a real fast breeding population, meaning you can kill as many as you can kill. They're going to have three more to replace everyone you killed. So you're going to have to use some kind of genetic yeah. warfare yeah. shit to lower their yeah. breeding population Mass Effect Krogan style. Yeah, and lab rats. We've kind of just been breeding the smartest ones, you know, because the, the dumbest ones just die in testing. I don't really see lab rat populations rats. that get reintroduced to wild rat populations not dying. Oh, you think right. they're weepier? No, I think the other rats will just kill them because they're from a different hive. They could Fucking integrate. Rats will eat their own young if there's not enough food around. Yeah, yeah like it'll be like that kid that went to college and comes back home and gets his ass kicked because he was smart, smart mouthing off the people. <laughs> oh, you think you're better than us? Then we just eat you. Yeah. <laughs> One problem against smart rats is that species that breed quickly tend to die, have short lifespans too. And how much are you going to learn if you're only alive for a year? All right. Raccoon tactics. Hey, Cam, what do you think the raccoon tactics are going to be? All right. Well, they, they're obviously great scavengers, so they're going to be able to, you know, get supplies that way. Are we talking about versus like a crow or versus what, what are we putting the raccoon Four up against? Way war. The octopus have the seas, the crows have the skies, and the lands are split between the rats and the raccoons. Yeah, the raccoons are going to run like the underground black market. You know, they're going to be like, what do you need? I got it. You need, you know, three fish from the Black Sea. I got you. You need, you know couple porno mags, I got you. They're going to so be like that sketchy like guy. The that's neutral like in, wheeling yeah, and the dealing chaotic, between the three. Yeah, the chaotic neutral between everything. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. Big in the reference. All right. Jared, what do you think the octopus military might's going to be like? Like how big of groups do octopus travel in? Uh, they usually travel by themselves, but they would probably adapt some kind of communal living standard to form a society. I just hope like they all hold hands and make a big web and capture it and wrap up whatever they want and then like eat it or whatever. That'd be great. All right, like a, high, a high feeding. <laughs> Going real body horror on this. I'm digging it. <laughs> right. Ah. They soup like they wrap around a bunch of fish and supify them. Yeah. Oh God, more supification. <laughs> oh God, the octopus are the war criminals of this era. I get it. Tom, <laughs> it's up to you. What did the crows bring to the table? The crows are like the um, stealth. They come in, they attack, they leave. They're like um, guerrilla warfare. <laughs> they rule the skies, of course. They bring yeah. wolves. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine if another species comes to dominate the planet and they fucking effectively enslave dogs again? <laughs> 
Like, dogs at what point are you too slaves. loyal as a species? First thing you do, <laughs> enslave dogs. <laughs> Final go. Who do you guys think would win in this three-way war between rats, crows, and octopus while the raccoons are playing middleman? I still say crow. I think, I think it depends on what happens with the earth. I think that's an important factor for any of those that's options. True. If like if it's all ocean, next, octopus. I think in the next 10 million years, uh, outlying any crazy climate shifts, a new supercontinent will form. So let's say there's a supercontinent. Uh, sea levels are like 10 feet higher, so there's less land, but there's still land. Yeah, my money's on the crows, regardless of if yeah. they can fly or not, because they got wolves. Yeah, oh, yeah. I, 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 wrong, I right? bet they'll adapt to learn how to fly underwater, too, and just start do sneak attacks swim? like... Swim. Yeah, they're gonna learn how to swim underwater. They already can, baby. Crows can do anything. <laughs> Not like deep diving. What I'm talking about though, down to like octopus. You know, like we need build a submersible. Yeah, they'll oh, figure like it out. Penguins. Like penguins, they'll get the wolves to swim out into the ocean, <laughs> and those are right on their back. And then when the wolf <laughs> dies, you know, the octopus will come up to eat the wolf, and then the crow will just fucking get the octopus. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are you guys imagining like actual animals like fighting? Yes. Yeah. My whole thing was like a mobilized, mechanized army. What the fuck would these guys build? Oh no! Who's <laughs> build all this stuff? One on one street war. <laughs> so it have to be. It has to be the raccoons then, because they're the only ones with thumbs. Yeah. This is after millions of years of evolution. They can repurpose all the garbage cans they forage in into mech mech warfare gear, and they'll take it to the octopus that are walking on land now. Yeah, they'll just go to Texas and figure out how to use guns, scavengeable guns from yeah. Texas ten million years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, are we speculating like which one will develop mechanized fighting thing, or are we just assuming they all have it? And then yeah, I'm assuming it. that if there's a four-way world war between advanced sentient species based on animal groups alive today, that they'd be on some kind of equal footing technologically. Well, yeah, well, then it's still crows. Or else it wouldn't be a world even... war. It would just be the crows genociding everybody. Because yeah. Yeah, even today, like drone attacks and stuff, that's how we operate. So like from the air is going to be like your best bet usually. Bird flu. I mean, yeah, you can do a lot of Chemical damage warfare. from the air, but if yeah. you want to hold positions, you need infantry. Yeah. That's why every military still has infantry. But right. we have to live on the ground. Like, the crows can, can live in the air. So I mean, they have while. legs for a reason. They do need to sleep. Well, I don't know. <laughs> there is a species of bird that flies its entire life, but yeah. their brains are the size of my fingernail. Yeah, why are we throwing out like, falcons and stuff, too, though? Like other birds. Uh, because it's specifically corvus birds, which are pretty much just ravens and crows, oh, okay. and crows are gotcha. the smarter of those two birds. Well, I was thinking of the ostriches, because, like, they fucking, they took down the Australians. <laughs> the ostriches oh. kicked the shit out of some Aussies or something? Oh, uh, you haven't heard yeah. about the emu war? Oh, the emu no. war, that's what it was, emus, Oh, yeah. bro, <laughs> 1930s, Australia. There's all these fucking emus out in the outback, <laughs> and they're ruining farmers' crops. So what does the Australian government decide to do? They decide to send a thousand men out to the outback with like 50,000 rounds, five fully automatic machine guns, rifles for every man. They kill about three dozen emu out of the 10,000 <laughs> over a four year period. And they went to war. It does and not lost. work. They declare <laughs> that they lost. What do they do after that? They put out a bounty on the emus and arm the farmers. They almost yeah. make the species go extinct within five years. <laughs> The farmers were that much better at catching them. Like it's their land, so they knew like they knew their land where the army doesn't know that land, probably. Well the real problem yeah, was the approach because thing. the army would pull up in jeeps firing their guns yeah. off, which would and scare them away and they'd and break down. off into different groups. The <laughs> farmers would just post up on a hill like, oh, there's some emu over there. Pah, 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 yeah, sniping them. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of big game hunt I want to do. That'd be great. Yeah. Brand well, bird. you can't do it anymore because the emus are endangered and protected. Yeah, no. <laughs> um, anything more with this idea or concept? I like it. Yeah. Ravens will colonize the moon. That's it. <laughs> Space um, ravens! This has been a production of Planet Amp Podcast, powered by Pinecast.